Okay, time to sit and do some theory crafting. No one on my team was appropriate to challenge Sabrina. It was time to set up for the sacrifice play. I caught IED the Voltorb some time ago, and much like the late Hand Grenade the Geodude, I caught him for the sole purpose of fighting Sabrina. Electric types are fast, powerful, and often come with paralyzing abilities. Maybe I'd get lucky. But sitting at level 16, he wasn't about to challenge anyone anytime soon. I decided it was time to swallow my pride and use the daycare center. Leaving a Pokemon at the daycare center, it gains one experience point for every step you take during gameplay. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but if you really think about it, it basically breaks the game for you. I mean, what kind of no-lifer would I have to be to just hop on my bike and ride up and down Route 5 for two or three hours? <laughs> Oh, Pokemon, you ignorant slut. I'm an ex-World of Warcraft player. Two hours of doing a mundane task in order to guarantee a win is nothing to me. Three hours later. I checked in on Voltorb and found that he'd grown quite a bit and was in line with everyone else's level now. Were you a good boy for the daycare man, IED? Were you a good boy? Here. Have a rare candy. With Electrode in my party and it having learned self-destruct, the stage was set for my showdown with Sabrina. It was just a hop, skip, and a jump from Route 5 to Saffron City. Kind of a waste of my moving on the map animation there. Gym Leader Sabrina is the Nuzlocke Breaker of Generation 1 Pokemon, but this fight had to happen sooner or later. I could only hope this wouldn't be the end of the road for me and my team. I arrived in Saffron City only to find that the gym is blocked by a member of Team Rocket? Not only there, but everywhere. The entire city is crawling with members of Team Rocket. They're blocking doors, threatening people in the streets, and causing havoc. Turns out, they're here to take over Silphco, the same company that made the scope that lets us see ghosts. And Saffron City is caught in the crossfire while they swarm the building. Looks like I'm not going to see Sabrina anytime soon. Next door to the Saffron City Gym is the Fighting Dojo. After the Karate Master's Hitmonlee misses a high jump kick and nearly kills itself for me, I decide to bring Hitmonchan onto my team as a reward for conquering the mini gym in the meantime. Too many doors and other places are blocked. There's not a lot I can really do around here. Looks like I'm gonna have to go to Sylphco myself and boot Team Rocket's sorry butts out of town. What begins then is quite possibly one of the biggest dungeons in the Pokemon franchise. The Sylphco Office Building. This place sports 11 floors, dozens of members of Team Rocket to fight, teleporter puzzles, locked doors, a confusing layout, and more than one boss level fight. It is a monumental task that will push anyone's team to the limit if you're not ready for it. Luckily, I showed up to the party with a high-powered electrode. I figured the best way to go about this was slow and methodical. Taking the stairs, I slowly explored every floor and took on every trainer I could find. Eventually, I found the key card, which serves as a master key for the entire building. Very convenient. And when I had taken on everyone that I could reach, 
I went back down to the first floor and started unlocking doors one after another. Repeating the process on every floor, I fought all the members of Team... Uh... Well, this is awkward. Wait, no! Mogwai, protect us! Uh, repeating the process on every floor and fighting more trainers, I just started taking teleporter pads. You know, I gotta give Silphco serious credit here. They're just coming up with all the cool stuff around here. Who runs this place? Tony Stark? Stumbling around from teleporter to teleporter, I... Gary... Whoa, 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 whoa. How did you get here? No, no, don't give me your smarmy dialogue, you pineapple-headed little fuck. I have the only keycard, and you're just tucked in this little office here waiting for me? Gary's team is starting to really take shape this late in the game, as he's even gotten his starter into its final form, Blastoise. He brags that he's filled his Pokedex so much that he's starting to really be able to tell which Pokemon are strong and which ones aren't. Meanwhile, he's still carrying around his Pidgeot, a remnant from the very start of the game. I mean, hey, do what you want with your Pokemon team, man, but don't claim to be an expert while also being a basic bitch. I gave Gary a spanking, again, and sent him on his way, again. Just ahead was the final teleporter that led up to the president of Silphco's office, and, just as I imagined, Giovanni, Team Rocket's leader. He says he's in the middle of an important business meeting with Silphco's president, but I can tell this is a mafia-style shakedown. If Team Rocket takes over Silphco, they'll have unfiltered access to all of their brilliant inventions and become unstoppable. Now this is more like it, Giovanni. In fact, this kind of makes sense of all the previous things, because all the other bits and bobs were all about making money. I wonder if it was all to just buy out Silphco or something like that. This is an evil master plan. Well done. Silphco has created teleportation devices. Scopes that can see ghosts, TMs, medicine, repels, and lots of other Pokemon-related products. If they completed a financial hostile takeover, Giovanni would basically run everything. But what drew Team Rocket here now of all times? There must be something specific that made them want to make their move right now. Hmm. Anyway... Giovanni's team was nothing last time we fought, so I put Primeape up front again to begin kicking people in the face like he always does, only to be met with a modified team that he cannot low kick to death. I actually had to move Pokemon around, strategize, and do some quick thinking to make sure no one went down during this fight. When the dust settled, though, I was victorious. Giovanni did his usual disappearing act along with the other members of Team Rocket in the building. Talking to the Silphco president, he tells me that Giovanni was after the prototype of a brand new type of Pokeball. The Master Ball. The Master Ball is a Pokeball that never fails to catch its target. No wonder he wanted it so badly. He gifts me the prototype as thanks for saving his company and tells me to keep it on the down low when I'm using it, as it's not ready for public consumption. There's only one Master Ball in the whole game, so I'm going to have to save it for when it really counts. Exiting Silphco and seeing that Team Rocket had disappeared from Saffron City entirely, I took stock of everything that had happened. IED had gained some serious levels, topping out as the first Pokemon in my party to reach level 50. Nice. 
but now there was no putting it off anymore. My victory over Team Rocket and Giovanni felt short-lived. After restocking my potions and such at the Pokemart, it was time to face Sabrina. Sabrina's gym is a maze of teleporter pads, much like the Sylphco building, but this time it was different. If I could flaunt my ancient Pokemon knowledge for just a moment, I can tell you that there is actually a trick to getting around in Sabrina's gym. There are teleporter pads that will send you to seemingly random places, but there is actually a pattern to where they send you. The first pad you step on is on its own, and every subsequent room has four. If you always choose the pad that is above or below you, you can make it all the way to Sabrina without fighting a single other trainer. I don't know why I still remember that. It's not like I've done any Nuzlocks of this game in the past. I guess that's just my childhood speaking to me. But with IED primed and ready, I didn't want to face any other Psychic-type gym trainers. Yeah, it's a waste of XP as you can't fight them once the gym leader is done, but with the plan we have going, I can't afford any unnecessary risks. If a level 50 Electrode can't win here, there's no point in risking him to have him be level 51 or 52. This is arguably the most difficult fight in the game when it comes to Nuzlocking. Sabrina's Kadabra, Mr. Mime, and Venomoth thankfully were not too much of a threat, as the difference in level served as a nice cushion between us. Electrode put them all down pretty handily with Spark and Light Screen, carefully maintaining his health for when the big guy came out. A level 43 Juggernaut with the Synchronize ability to pass off status ailments, Recovery to keep its health up, Calm Mind to pump itself up, and the move Psychic to annihilate everything in its path. This Pokemon is a monster. And so the Titans clashed. My finger was on the trigger the whole time. I thought maybe, just maybe, Electrode could outmuscle Alakazam and no one would have to die. But despite the massive amount of damage I kept dealing him, Sabrina kept healing and spamming recovery. It just wasn't enough. Then, very suddenly, he went on the offensive and went for the kill. It was decision time. Trade out for Charizard and hope Alakazam didn't just start spamming Psychic to gut my whole team. Or do what we came here to do. IED, it's been an honor. Thank you for all your help. Do your thing. Self-destruct! And just like that, it was over. Sabrina gave me the Marsh Badge, and the most difficult fight in the Nuzlocke was behind me. I'm sad that I didn't get to keep Electrode, but I think I knew it was going to come to this either way. Alakazam is arguably the most fearsome Pokemon in all eight gyms, and short of exploding in his face, there wasn't much that could be done without him running rampant over a bunch of mons that had a direct type weakness to him. Sometimes, the sacrifice play has to be made in order for everyone else to get out alive. Thank you, IED. You will be remembered. I turned my eyes toward the ocean next. Fire Lord Blaine was somewhere south of me, and it would take a long journey to cross the ocean.